Northampton. Um, we're here just for a few moments today to share the best news you will ever hear. Even if you don't believe it today, there's a fair chance you could believe it in the future. Because we have one life, and then we die. And the reason for that is the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. That's why we don't live forever in this state, because the wages of sin is death. But I want to share some good news with you today. It's the best news you'll ever hear. Uh, we are a group of Christians from different churches. We are not a cult. We are following the one Lord Jesus Christ in history with evidence who did and said what he said and was who he said he was so we follow him we don't follow uh labels across the front of the door of a church so much not so much denominations but we follow the lord and the savior so we share the good news that he spoke about these are not my words they're his words so go and research it yourself, go and read it yourself, and you will discover. Uh, we've got three books on the table there, three books here, you can take what you want. If you want to ask any questions, we don't know everything, but we know enough. Come and ask us, there's uh, males and females here, and uh, but what I would call my friends, they're truly my friends here today. Uh, if you've any prayer requests, you want a prayer, you want someone, you want to talk over something, come to one of us here and we'll pray for you. Now, I always stick this up because this sort of portrays, in a way, you know, this is us, you know, male and female, this is us in this world today. We're all the same. trying to say at the moment, but the truth is, 2 plus 2 equals 4, so we depict a male and a female there. I want to ask you a question, as you go past in your busy lives, I know what it's like uh, raising a family with children, grandchildren, um, maybe you would think about these things, but I want to ask you a question, that is, have you ever said thought or done something towards your family or a friend that you regret you know we make mistakes all of us is there anything you've ever said to a, your family member or a friend or done something that afterwards I wish I'd never said that or I wish I'd never done that I, I would say safely that um, probably we're all like that I certainly am. I've made my uh, <laughs> amount of uh, errors in life. Um, so, I want to tell you something. Imagine if we do that to one another and we make mistakes and we say and do things that our families and friends may not like, don't agree with. Imagine how God, the Creator, responds to that when we do the same to Him. Scripture says, For I, the Lord, do not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He says, I do not change, O children of Jacob, uh, are not consumed. So God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. His word that he speaks, not my words, is eternal and will go on for eternity. Long past when I'm buried, long past when we're all buried, his word continues. That's a bold statement. What I love about God, this living God, is that his words are true and bold. They're not whimpering excuses. They're not make-me-ups by man. They're true and bold. So he says he doesn't change. 
He also gives us some loving, wise advice and guidance. He says, guard against self-deception. We can all deceive ourselves. Each of you, if someone among you thinks he is wise in this age, all oh, there's many think they're wise in this age. That's a John Scott. Let him become foolish so that he can become wise. For the wisdom of this age is foolishness with God. You hear about all the banter going on on the social networks and we want you to be like this and you're not that person, you're actually someone else. That's foolishness to God. Now either he's right or wrong. And you are right, maybe you, maybe you think God's wrong. You want the Polish one? Yeah. That's what he says. So he gives okay. us that idea, become foolish. That was the best day of my life when I said, I am wrong, you are right, God. That was the best day of my life. That was like me being born. An actual fact I was. He also warns us with his loving truth and he says therefore each of us will give an account of himself to God. Now we can run on this earth for 90, 100 years and we can convince ourselves and deceive ourselves that we're getting away with it, that we can do whatever we want to do. But he says therefore each of us will give an account of ourselves on your day to God. I will have a last day in, in this county, lived here 30 years, I treat you like my neighbors, I love you because I treat you like my neighbors, but I will have a last day, it could be tomorrow. We all have a last day of breath. We know that, looking around at our families, our friends, that have passed on. Some with the understanding of God and some having closed that door on him, re rejecting him. <laughs> God made that wonderful pigeon that could fly like that through the midst of us. That's amazing. make a mistake with our friends, if we say something wrong to our families or our friends, or we do something wrong, or we think something wrong, there's a division happens. That's what happens with God. We get separated from a holy and righteous God. That's what happened after creation. There was a time when Adam and Eve blissfully walked in the presence of God with that utter peace, blissfully. Then there was a time later on in that same garden where Adam was so ashamed of his body, he hid himself. He hid himself because he'd been divided away from God through sin. That's the first Adam. Jesus is the second Adam. This man, okay. Jesus, who is he? Why did he come? As that gentleman said earlier on, that passed by, he said, why do we celebrate Easter? I'm going to tell you. This man, Jesus, who gave his life, he came, as my friend says, to give his life, not to take it, not to take your life. There are many dictators in this world and in history who take people's lives, innocent women, men, children. God, one of the seven things that God hates, yes, there are things God hates. You've got to understand who he is. He hates the shed of innocent blood. That's one of the things he hates. And the other thing is, one other thing is a lying tongue. So you ask yourselves. Scripture says, and I'm the first one, it applies to me, 
We have all fallen short the glory of God. All of us. I'm at the front of the queue. I've fallen short of the glory of God. But you ask yourselves. I'm not here to judge you. You judge yourself. Do you think you're a good person? There's a moral law written on our hearts. It's in our conscience. God put it there. Every one of the eight million living on this earth now has a conscience and they instinctively know what's the difference between right and wrong. Even though they continue to do evil. You look at children, and <laughs> I've got grandchildren, children, two boys and a girl, and I can tell you the boys, they know when they're doing something naughty, they know when they're doing something wrong. It's amazing, they instinctively know when they've done something wrong. That's because the moral law was written on our hearts, it's in our conscience, and the conscience either defends us or it accuses us. When I was a schoolboy, I used to go into the local sweet shop and I used to fill my pockets up of sweets and not pay. I was thieving and I used to go and share with my school friends. They thought I was great, I was popular. But until I got caught by the shop owner and told this was wrong and my conscience accused me I felt guilty. This is wrong. I've done something wrong. So I stopped doing that. So ask yourself, how many lies have you told in your life? 10, 20, 50,000? A day. A day. Thank you, sir. He's an honest man. I have hope to you, sir. You're honest. You're honest, sir. I was a liar, too. I was a liar, too. What do you call someone who lies? You call him a liar. Let's ask you another one. Have you ever taken anything that did not belong to you? Like I was saying about myself, stealing sweets. Have you ever taken anything that didn't belong to you? Even if it was a pencil at school. What do you call someone who takes things that doesn't belong to them? Thief. A thief, thank you sir. Let me ask you another. Have you ever lost it after another person? Whether you're single or married, Christ took it further because he knows us and he said if you as much as lust, lust after another person you have committed adultery there in your heart. So ask yourselves when you go home have you done that? I'm not judging you. My debt to God is bigger than yours probably. Let me ask you one more. Have you ever taken God's name in vain? You're doing DIY at home with a hammer and nail. You miss the nail, you hit your thumb. Ah, yeah. And out comes that curse word. And we don't curse bad people in history. We curse the most perfect man that has ever walked this earth, Jesus Christ. Let me ask you, would you ever take your mother's name and use that name as a curse word? My mother's passed on, but I would never take her name and use it as a curse word. I love her. Of course you wouldn't do that because you too love your mother. Mothers are amazing. Absolutely amazing. But God says, they shall not go unpunished, those who take my name in vain. You can argue with that. You can shut the door on that. You can say, I don't believe that, but it doesn't change anything. We can drive on the roads here, and we can say, we, we, we speed in a 30 mile an hour limit, we get stopped by the police. The policeman says, look sir, you, you, you are doing 50. You can't say to that person, well, I don't believe in that law. You're still gonna get fined. <laughs> So there is a reality to life. So when you, when your last day comes, like a couple of my friends recently, last three weeks, their last day came. When you stand before him, ask yourself. I'm not judging you. Ask yourself: Will you be innocent or guilty? God yeah, will judge you by the moral law that 
that he's written on your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Then you have to ask yourself, will it be heaven which is eternal life? You're not going to die. You'll live forever. Eternal life in his presence. Or will it be justice and punishment which is a place called hell? This is how to get to heaven. These are not my words. These are his words. These are Jesus' words. In fact, Jesus said, it is better for you to pluck your eye out if you sin than and to go into eternal life with one eye than it is to go into hell with two eyes. That's what he says. Now you have to ask yourself, either he was delusional and lying, William, or he was absolutely eternal truth. Only those two things. 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 Only He's called the bread of life. He's called the comforter. He's called the deliverer. He's called the first and the last. He's called God. He's called the bridegroom. If there's a bridegroom, there must be a bride. He's called the I am. He's called the last Adam. He's called the propitiation, the redeemer. He's called the word. called the light of the world. We see much darkness in this world, don't we? We've only got to go on the internet. He's called the light of the world. He's called mighty God. He's called the Amiga, the refuge. He's the root of David, the bright morning star, the Lamb of God, the Prince of Peace. Being the Lamb of God, He came Die for us, and my sin, which is a long list, probably bigger than yours, my debt to God is a big debt. But Scripture says, I tell you, <laughs> Scripture says, by cancelling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands, this He set aside, nailing it to the cross. My debt was nailed to that. receive what Jesus did on the cross, shedding his own blood, giving his life for me and for you. Metanoia is the Greek word for repentance. It just means you're going in this direction and you turn around and you go in this direction. Think about these things. Use the mind that God gave you but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is what I call love. That's the definition of love. Not this emotional uh, stuff that we hear every single day. People say, I love you. Young people, I love you, I love you. That's lust. That's not love. This is love where Christ would come and die for us, even though at the time we're doing the things he doesn't like, he gave his life. That's, that's called love. Demonstrated. There is no other religious leader in history, I don't care who you name, who demonstrated and then did it, gave his life on the cross and forgave the world of sin. There's not a man or woman in the world who has done that. There's not a man in the world who has calmed the storms, raised the dead, as he did with Lazarus, Martha and Mary's, I think a brother, brother Lazarus, he said, come out of his deathbed. And he rose up and came out. 
He gave the world of sin. He healed people. Gave uh, sight to the blind. There's no one else. Go and read it. Go and research it. No one else in history has ever done that. And the reason is they could not do it. They could not do it. He is the saviour of the world. Isn't it amazing? I was thinking about this this morning. You know how thoughts come into your head. We've got this climate change religion going on. And what do they want to do? Psychologically, they want to save the world. Psychologically, they know there should be a saviour. <laughs> Yet they're saving the planet and they can't even save themselves. So think about these things. For God so loved the world, Scripture says, that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believing in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So there's a choice there. Christ came for one or two things. So we can have everlasting life, all we perish. And that's our choice. We either turn to Him or we shut that door tight and closed for the rest of our life. Then it will be too late. Yeah. Scripture says today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. You don't know how long you've got. My daughter-in-law's father died during the week. He was expected to live longer, he died. I had a nephew of 34, 31. Healthy young nephew, he dropped dead one day. Left his son behind. You don't know when your last day is. I don't know it either. My last day could be tomorrow. Think about these things. I'm sharing that good news with you. While you go past, in your quiet time. It doesn't matter whether you're the Queen of England or if you're living on the streets of this town. Christ loves you. Christ died for you. You can have eternal life. God is no respecter of persons. He's not a fool. There's a beautiful word. I'm going to end with this. There's a beautiful word in the Bible. It says, whoever, and it goes like this, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't matter what color skin you are. It doesn't matter what culture you come from. It doesn't matter how much money you've got in the bank. It doesn't matter what you were taught. In your family, as a religion, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank you, Northampton, for listening today. Please think about these things and consider them, because time moves quick. Thank you.